In this video, I want to show you exactly how to install Hyros on a GoI level. This is something that I personally struggle with and couldn't find a single piece of content online helping me how to do it, which is why I'm shooting this video today to help you out in this process. Now, if you're new to the channel, you don't yet know who I am. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at pitadvertising.com, an online marketing growth firm specializing in elevating graphic businesses by simplifying online marketing. With that being said, we've had the chance to work with over 160 clients in the last couple of years and are profitably actively spending over $9.6 million on ads every single year. With that said, let's get straight into today's video. So I'm going to assume that at this point, you've already signed up and made an account with Hyros. If you have or haven't yet, there's going to be a link down below in the description for you to do so and sign up on the platform. Now, with that said, once you've signed up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to head over to tracking. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is when you get a tracking, you're going to see your universal script. So what you'd want to do first is you want to copy that script. There's going to be a button beside script that says copy. You want to click on that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to head over to GoI level and go to your sites. So let's go through that right now. And what you simply want to do is once you've headed over to one of your sites on GoI level, you want to click on it, head over to settings right here. And then under settings, you want to go to head tracking code. You're going to want to paste your script right here and then hit save bottom right. And now this is where it gets interesting. Take note of the domain for which you're going to be running ads from. So right now I've made a subdomain that I use on GoI level, which is in this case, lp.paidadvertising.com. In your case, it might be, you know, lp.yourwebsite.com or whatever it is. If you use either a subdomain or a root domain as the primary domain of a funnel on Goa level, keep note of that. Why? Well, if we now head back to Hyros, what you're going to want to do is at the top of your universal script, you're going to want to click on selecting a domain and you're going to click on add a custom domain. What you want to do from there is you're going to want to click on add a domain top right corner. From there, what I would suggest that you put is the letter T or tracking dot your domain dot com. So again, the same domain that you're going to be using on Goa level, you also want to be using here. So you would just add a custom domain. So once again, I just want to make sure I'll give an example to make sure this is clear. If your root domain that you're utilizing on um, your Goa level website is bitadvertising.com, then here you're going to want to click or create a new subdomain. So as an example, I'm using bitadvertising.com on Goa level. I'm going to come here and use tracking.bitadvertising.com or t.bitadvertising.com. Now, even if I am using a subdomain on Goa level, so as an example, like me, I'm using lp.pitadvertising.com. I still want to think only about the root domain. So in this case, since I'm using a custom domain, my root domain still is pitadvertising.com. So what I would do, it wouldn't change. On Hyros, I would click or create a new custom tracking domain that would be t.pitadvertising.com or tracking.pitadvertising.com. Once you've clicked on that, you can exit out of here. And then now you're going to have your new tracking domain created and you're going to have a button that says complete verification, which is what you want to click on. Now, this is actually going to give you some DNS settings to add. So what you would want to do is you would want to open your domain configuration. So if you're on GoDaddy, go to GoDaddy. If you're on Squarespace, go to Squarespace. And from there, you want to go to your DNS settings and you're going to want to add a new record. You're going to click on a C name record under the value. You're going to add tracking or the letter T depending on whatever subdomain you just added right here. So in this case, in my example, I would have added tracking. And then what you want to do is you want to add a target right here. So under the target, you're going to want to copy that, add that to your DNS provider. Once you're done and you've saved with your DNS provider, come back to Hyros, hit verify account. And this should actually now say a little check mark with ready to use right beside it your tracking domain. Do be mindful, it might take about 24 to 48 hours for this to set up properly just because of the nature of a DNS provider. Some DNS provider takes a couple of hours and up to a day or two to even refresh their actual naming records, which might mean that Hyros is not going to see this as being properly set up from the start. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to head over to your ad tracking platform or under integrations right here. And if you're going to be running meta ads as an example, which I'm guessing a lot of you probably watching that will be, then what you will want to do is head over to meta and then hit configure. It'll simply ask you to log in utilizing meta, what you want to do right here. And then what I would say is if you're an agency owner like me, you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing on screen right now, even though it's going to be blurred out for you. There's tons and tons of ad accounts being selected automatically. If you don't want those to appear under your Hyros account, um, which by the way, in if you're not using your Hyros tracking pixel on any of these accounts, it doesn't matter even if they're there. It's not like the data is going to populate on Hyros. But if you just want to be safe or you want to keep 
this clean, what you could do is just select all the accounts that you don't want to have right here. And bottom right, you're going to have something that says blacklist. So you can just remove these accounts completely from your Hyros account. Now you're going to want to head over to conversions right here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you turn on send conversions to Meta. Why? One of the abilities of Hyros is that it actually sends conversions back to Meta. So it doesn't just show you a different data. What it actually also does is it helps Meta learn from this data. I'll show you specific ways for perhaps an info product or local business, how this might be very useful in today's video. So what you want to do is you want to select your business manager right here. And then under pixel to receive conversions, you've got two choices. You can either pick one of your active pixels. So you could pick your existing pixel and Hyros will start sending data to this pixel or the latter, which I recommend being the solution for you to pick is you're going to click on create new Hyros pixel. And what that's going to do is Hyros is now going to have its own pixel on your Facebook account to send data to. Why do you not want this to be sent to your existing pixel? Well, Hyros will only send data that has been vetted and qualified by their algorithm. And you don't want to mix unfiltered data with filtered data. So I typically recommend you set up a new pixel when doing this step right here. And now whenever it comes down to default event names, those are going to be the event names that Hyros will be feeding back to the pixel on Facebook. So anytime you have a sale that Facebook or that Hyros, I should say, records, if Hyros sees a sale or a purchase, this will show up as Hyros conversion on Facebook. So if you go to the Facebook ads manager, you go to your ad set level and you pick a new event to optimize for, this would be showing up as Hyros conversion. Now a call event would be called call. So that's quite simple. A lead event would be called lead event and a card event would be a uh, Hyros add to cart. You do want to make sure that every single one of these are toggled on. So you want to make sure that you are sending lead events to meta that you are sending, you know, conversion events, uh, order conversions, so on and so forth. And then what you want to do is under lead ads, if you're planning on running instant form campaigns as an example, where the leads opt in on Facebook, but you want Hyros to be able to track these leads, what you can actually do is under here, under your page name, you would want to toggle on subscribe lead generation. So anytime you're going to run an instant form campaign, those leads would also appear on Hyros. Now, before I switch back to Gua level in a second, I want to talk about Stripe or payment processor integration. Now, very important for you to know if you want your purchase conversion value or your purchase events to show up on Gua level, you also have to integrate your payment processor. So if you're going to be using Gua level and you're going to record sales on Gua level or off platform even, then add this platform to your Hyros account. So would that platform be Stripe? Would that be, you know, Easy Pay, uh, NMI, PayPal, Recurly, Salesforce, Invoice, Go Cardless, Wave, Authorize.net, or Chargebee? Add it to Hyros. That way, whenever a sale occurs, it'll be able to go back through Hyros's history of data and see, hey, was that somebody that I had ever seen on the account? Was that the same IP address? Or was that the same email or name as someone that Hyros had ever tracked before? And if so, it would match the sale to someone who Hyros had started to track. Okay, so let's get back now to Goa level at hand. Now, I'm guessing if you're going to be using Goa level, you're probably going to be using Goa level to have an opt in for it, right? To have an opt in form where people are going to submit their information and become a lead of yours. Or you might have some e commerce features also on Goa level, right? Where people are going to check out and buy from your store. Or the latter might be a call event, which people are going to book in a call with you and you want to track every booked call event with Hyros. How do you do that? Well, let me show you how this works. So now that you've set up your head tracking code on your funnel, you can hit save. And the beauty with that is that if you are wanting or using Goa level to actually send e commerce events to Hyro, such as purchases, your job is done. So as long as you've added this code right here, and that's you've already synced your back end payment processor. So like Stripe, as an example to Hyro, you're good and set up. What I'm about to share with you right now is if you're going to send leads, or if you're going to send calls to Hyro, here's how to do so. So what you want to do is you want to head over to your calendars, okay, whatever calendar you're going to have embedded on your funnel, whatever calendar you might be running ads to whatever calendar people might come across with, would that be organically or would that be a paid ads calendar? I invite you to set it up so that you're going to see those conversion events on high rows. Here's how to do so. You're going to click on one of your calendars. You're going to go to these three dots on the right hand side and go to edit. And then from there, you're going to head over to forms and payment. And what you want to do is you want to paste the following piece of text at the end of your redirect URL. So so for this to work, what you must do 
is after somebody booked in a call with you, okay, you need to redirect them to another page. What I typically recommend is anybody watching that running a call funnel, make sure that you redirect people to a thank you page once they've booked in the call, showing them how to confirm their call, showing them what's going to happen on the call, perhaps some testimonials or case studies of yours, right? And what you want to do is you want to paste the following bit. So I'm going to copy that, put that on screen right here. And what you want to do is at the end of your thank you page URL, add the following bit, okay? And what that's going to be doing is when somebody lands on your thank you page, assuming that this thank you page is hosted on Gua Level, and not only that, you've added your tracking script, your universal script from Hyros on the Gua Level funnel. What you do is you add this little piece of text at the end of the URL of your thank you page. And once you're done with that, you'll hit save top right corner, okay? And what that does is if somebody ever books in a call with you and they end on the thank you page, it passes on the event. So it passes on this person's phone number and email to the thank you page. Now, if you go to sales data on Hyros and you go to calls right here, you would actually see these calls coming up right there. And this information would actually give you like the leads email and the leads phone number that booked in that call. So it would be able to show you um, and match this person to a previous event you had. So for Hyros to recognize you as a lead, once again, you would have had to give in your email or perhaps, you know, phone number at some point. So with that being said, if this was already an, an existing lead in your pipeline, Hyros would have now matched this lead with the profile of whoever booked in a call and you would be able to see their entire customer journey. So to give you an example, I just clicked on one of my leads right here. And what I can see is that this person clicked um, somewhere from one of my uh, social media platforms for the first time on the 18th of May. They booked in a call on the 18th of May. Then essentially they saw one of my ads on July 25th. They booked in a call once again on July 25th. Uh, then they opted in on July 25th. Then they uh, were redirected back to my main website. Then they booked in a call again on the 2nd of August. So this probably is someone that I'm guessing my team has disqualified more than once and they just kind of keep booking in the call. But it goes to show you that Hyros tracks the entire history of that lead through, again, their journey tab right here. Now, when it comes to a lead event, if you want to make sure that Hyros actually is able to collect every single lead, technically what they say is that anybody who's actually opting in under your funnel, if you already have the tracking script installed, the lead should automatically be sent to Hyros. If you want to be absolutely safe, of this, what you can do is whatever form you're going to have embedded on your Goa level funnel, go to that form. So go to the forms tab, go to your builder, open up this form. Now click on edit. And what you want to do top left corner, go to add form element, and you're going to want to search for the script event, which is going to be all the way at the bottom. You're going to have HTML, which you're going to want to drag and drop this event right here. You're going to open this up. You're going to go to edit HTML. And what do you know? You're going to paste in your tracking script from Hyros straight into here. Hit yes, save. And then you're going to hit save. Also top right corner. Once you're done, it is going to tell you alert. There's a third party tracking script here, which could block functionality. If you know, this is like a, a privacy security issue. I'm telling you, it does not. You can go to proceed right here and this would actually save up your form. Don't don't worry, this will not move your elements. This will not appear on your form. People won't see that. It's in the back end, essentially, of the website. You would have now this tracking script embedded on the form itself, which allows you once again to track the events happening on that form. Now, if ever, because of what I just showed you, sometimes in some cases, what might happen is that you'll start receiving duplicate events on Hyros, okay? Because both the tracking script on the funnel and the tracking script on the form fire at the same time, and it sends you two leads the high rows. If ever you have any of that, well, first of all, I would tell you remove the tracking script from the form and leave it simply to the one on the website. Uh, it doesn't happen in any case, again, that I'm telling you. So if it only happens with specific cases, well, what you would want to do is you would want to click on that specific lead that is a duplicate and you can simply delete the lead off of high rows. And this is how you install high rows properly while utilizing Goa Level. Now, if you made it this far in this video and you are an info product business owner or an e-commerce brand owner wanting to partner with a paid ads partner on a Meta, Google, or TikTok, click the button down below to book in a call with our team at paidadvertising.com today. On that note, I'm going to wish you an amazing day. Check out other videos on the channel for some more useful marketing tips, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.